For a while, we, we will keep it here. And That's fine. Once presentation will finish, we'll get rid of it. Uh, we are going to have a live stream here uh, to our Robert Council's Facebook page. So that's why we are a bit nervous about <laughs> being online at the same time uh, <laughs> and providing the content. <laughs> nervous about the technology, not yeah. about the media. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's good to know. Yes. But you are free to take uh, tea, coffee, water um, and some refreshments you. as you wish. So, go ahead. Thank you for joining us this morning, this afternoon already. I'm Narek Tovmasen uh, from British Council Armenia, Arts Manager, and we are delighted to host uh, this roundtable discussion uh, today within Keen International Women Face Festival on uh, women involvement in the film industry in different countries. Um, British Council is always supporting equality and diversity agenda within its all operations and uh, my colleague, our director, Alex Arbegan, will talk about it a bit later. Uh, within the uh, Film Festival, the uh, King Film Festival, we are also organizing BAFTA Shorts uh, screenings. Uh, you will see just exactly after this meeting at 2 o'clock in the venue next door, HBU. Uh, besides this, we are cooperating with uh, the Film Festival for longer ago, I think, with this uh, and trying to be engaged, involved, in any case we are uh, aligned to. Um, as to our agenda on um, gender involvement, I would say that soon we are going to conduct uh, research on uh, gender balance and women, particularly women involvement in creative industries across Armenia. Uh, this will happen uh, very soon. I think in December we'll start uh, and uh, we'll share results with you if you are interested afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, at this stage I will pass to um, Alex Arbegan, uh, Director of British Council Armenia, and then we'll go on. Okay. Thank you, dear guests, welcome to this event. I want to congratulate Kim Paraton for the 14th already film festival. And uh, this is one of the festivals that we cooperate with and we are really happy to be partner with and we try to bring the best of British development of the last uh, years um, through the festival to the Armenian audience. And uh, so far our participation has been mainly showcasing. So we thought that maybe it's time to have a more um, a broader engagement in terms of also holding some discussions and trying to understand some trends, developments, challenges in this field. So that's why this year we came up with this wonderful event and thanks to uh, Game Festival for arranging this and thank you for being here. Uh, one question, I mean, uh, let me just briefly talk about the British Council. Uh, you might have heard about the organization, but the British Council has a history of more than 80 years and our main mission is actually to promote cultural links, cultural relations between UK and the countries that we work in and we work in 100 countries. Uh, and in Armenia we are probably one of the youngest offices. We just celebrated our 15th anniversary this year. Uh, but 
we have done within these 15 years extensive work in terms of uh, culture, in terms of language and uh, education. You might ask what gender or equality diversity has to do with British Council. Of course, being a cultural relations organization, uh, diversity, equality matters to us. It's actually the DNA of our organization. So I would like to take this opportunity and present to you very briefly what uh, the British Council approaches to equality, diversity, and what we want to achieve through this discussion and through the, some of the activities that Narek mentioned and what outcomes we would expect from this meeting. I love this chart because this basically summarizes uh, the whole of the British Council approach to equality, diversity. So if you look at the triangle, you can see that Equality diversity actually is a moral case and it's a moral importance for all of us, not just British Council, but it's also a legal case for us because if we don't ad adhere to the equality diversity norms, then we are going to appear in the court, so it's important for us. But it also has a business importance because if you bring in equality of voices, then you have a larger opportunity to reach out to more audiences in larger audiences and have a greater impact. So it's also a business importance for us. And in this cycle, you can see the areas that we mostly cover. So it's age, disability, ethnicity, gender, religion, sexual uh, identity, and work-life balance, which is our seventh area of diversity. This doesn't mean that we don't do anything else outside of this, but we have these particularly six areas because they are legally protected areas according to the UK law. So what we do actually, it's not that we do projects in each of these areas, we try to mainstream it through our work. So as I said, we, worked in, we work in arts, we work in education, we work in English, and through all of our work we try to mainstream, we try to bring in audiences, we try to lift the, any barriers that exist to make sure that these people can equally, openly, inclusively participate in all of the British Council work. And of course we do this internally and externally. Just very briefly, I'm sure most of you probably have seen this photo, this is my favorite, just to show what we mean by equality. So equality is not just giving the same thing to all of the people. It's basically giving people what they need in order to fully participate. So this is our approach. We make sure that people have everything they need to participate. But my favorite actually is the third one. You eliminate all the barriers and you just give an opportunity to people to fully participate. So we try to do both wherever, in whichever way we can. And what we mean diversity, these are actually the same salads. One is blended, one is not. So what we try to do actually, we try to bring in all the diversity in the communities that we work. Because we love the colors, we love the texture, we love the taste and look of different people and communities and activities, etc. And what is important, we don't blend them, we don't bring them to the same kind of cubic and say this is how we think, you have to think the same way, vice versa, we bring in the different voices so that we have different approaches, we have more inclusive programs and we have more I inclusive projects. And of course inclusivity is actually the overarching theme for us for uh, diversity and for equality. Gender, as you have seen, is one of the areas uh, of British Council. So what we do within British Council, if we look internally, we are a very diverse organization. Working in 100 countries make us diverse, want, uh, whether we want it or no. But if we will look across the offices, actually gender is one of the areas that is very important to us. Generally, in many of the offices, we would have a vice versa balance. We have more women working in British Council than men. But what is the problem if you go higher across the um, grades and positions, etc., you see more male having the leadership roles. And this is a common issue. This is not just within British Council, but we have this in British Council as well. But at the same time, we have measures in place to ensure that women have the opportunities. For example, we have programs, development programs to help women, shadowing opportunities, for example. In our region, which is called Wider Europe, which covers from Central Asia up to Western Balkans and Israel, so all the countries in between, so in wider Europe, we have shadowing opportunity. And if you look across, for example, the country director's profile, half of the country directors are women and half of the country directors are male. Half of the country directors are locally appointed, 
and half of them are UK uh, appointed. So we, we try to promote this equality through different measures that we input in our organization. We have uh, staff diversity surveys where we measure the presence of women, uh, not only within the organization, but across levels. We have policies in place. We do equality screening of our projects. So every large, big project that we start, it goes through the equality screening. We try to make sure that the audiences we reach and um, the activities we use, they first of all don't discriminate, but secondly, they bring in new audiences. And gender, of course, is one of them. So what we do in gender at the moment, why we took actually the area of creative economy. We do big, uh, large work in, in the area of uh, creative economy and uh, we are just finalizing a three-year project that we are delivering within an uh, uh, EU-funded project, Culture and Creativity Project. It was a very interesting project and one of the issues that has been raised uh, is actually woman representation in the creativity sector. Like British Council, if you look across the creativity sector, there is a huge woman representation. And the areas where we found that, are, that might be uh, problematic, actually we don't have statistics, that's what we are trying to gather through the research that we do. But from our experience, I think the problem was, yes, there are a lot of women in creative sector, but how representative they are across all the creative sector. Are there some sectors, for example, it might be IT, it might be digital, etc. Are there some sectors where I are considered as male dominated and if yes, why? So this is one of the questions we try to answer. If you look across the levels, like for example the decision level, uh, making level, are there women represented at decision making level in the creative sector? Yes, no, what are the challenges and what are the opportunities for women? And of course, we consider that culture and creativity can be actually one of the leading uh, areas where we can bring in this uh, whole issue of gender representation and make sure that it actually has a social and um, cultural change because this is one of the areas where, as, as we said, we have good representation of women. So while uh, helping them to promote through this area, we can showcase, we can be a role model through creative economy to show that this is possible and by bringing in more gender women voices into decision making, we can actually broaden up this sector uh, and bring in new audiences and have a, a voice that is actually representative of our society. Eventually we have 50% women, 50% more or less a male globally in the world. So women should have the equal right and equal opportunity to raise their voice and uh, present their voice and stories at a higher level, at a decision-making level. So this is what we will be trying to do through our research that we initiated through Culture and Creativity uh, program. And as Narek said, we will be happy to share this report with you and have your feedback before we finalize it. But uh, we would very much also appreciate and like that Today's discussion is also themed around this issue, so if you can bring in your experiences, suggest resources, uh, tell us your stories, it will be very, very helpful, which we will use during our research and, um, as we said, share with you. This is basically the uh, one chart that I actually uh, missed out. This is the Global Gender Gap uh, Index, which uh, has the countries represented in our region, you can yeah. see Armenia is the second from the bottom, so <laughs> the gender gap report is actually uh, showing that we have issues in Armenia. And definitely, uh, I mean, uh, if you go to the report, you can also the, see the analysis of this. And definitely, this is one of the areas we can have a bigger contribution. And as I said, we want to use your input and we want to use culture and creativity as a sector to do this. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity to me to talk to you. Unfortunately, I have a few other big important meetings to, to attend, but my colleagues will be here, they will be taking notes, and I will be very much looking forward to see your feedback and outcomes of your discussion. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll continue now to local situation uh, about women engagement, Shall involvement. I uh, about women involvement in uh, film industry, particularly <coughs> in Armenia, and Mariam will do the short brief about her experience as a champion of uh, women involvement in film industry. Uh,
and um, uh, and then we'll go around the table and taking uh, questions and opinions and remarks as you wish. Thank you, Armina, for joining us. <laughs> Maya, over to you. Maya, Jana. Uh, uh, Jana, Jana. Thanks. First of all, I would like uh, to say thank you to British Council for organizing <coughs> this round table because it's a very important topic. And of course, I would like to say thank you to our guests uh, who came uh, from different countries and from Armenia too. And it's a very important uh, topic uh, and this may be the main topic for our festival because uh, the main um, aim of our festival is uh, to create uh, gender equality in the uh, cinema industry. And uh, why we're organizing the film festival, women's film festival, because we know how it's difficult to be a woman director in Armenia uh, when our film industry is very in very difficult situation and uh, it's more difficult uh, to find money for women than for men. And uh, we have many stereotypes uh, in our society. So uh, that is why we organize this festival. We work uh, on this festival and we try to change this situation in cinema. So we uh, would like to help uh, women directors uh, to show their films uh, to have discussions, to help them in their developing uh, and uh, we have hope that uh, one day uh, we will have many, many women, uh, Armenian women film directors in our film industry. So uh, I would like to uh, invite to discussion. Yeah, Armenia is here and uh, as a, a person who is battled a lot. <laughs> In this industry, uh, it would be interesting to uh, for us to hear your experience, if possible, to share difficulties you are facing in your day-to-day -day operations, especially from your perspective. Okay, uh, maybe since the topic is the women in film industry, maybe today I will talk more as a film producer. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. And uh, <coughs> since I'm uh, like, uh, of course, uh, that's true that. Um, um, uh, it's um, very difficult in Armenia, but I don't really uh, share the opinion that the reason is uh, in a uh, gender issue, but I would say that it's, uh, I see the main reason in the law. So, uh, in the law no, of film um, production, film, mm -hmm, yes, film mm -hmm. law, film document uh, mm -hmm. that does not exist in Armenia. And if it did, then many issues would uh, be solved and then after that uh, we would see the picture of um, involvement, uh, like gender involvement, uh, more um, clear, in, in more clear, it would, the picture would be more, more clear. At the moment, uh, if I, if I, um, in the, um, if I'm honest, um, the majority of film producers in Armenia at the moment are women. Mm -hmm. And even new directors mainly are women. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I, if we speak about all the generation, yes, it's more uh, male uh, directors mm -hmm. are in all the generation. But new generation, um, uh, there are mm, female directors and mainly female producers, actually. Mm. So, um, and difficulty of developing the industry is um, in the law. And in this, I think that British Council and um, uh, people uh, from foreign countries maybe could uh, um, help us uh, with advice, with uh, with um, sharing experiences and uh, even uh, with maybe um, documenting some kind of uh, experiences uh, for us to be of help uh, because at the moment I would just uh, would like to share one experience that we are forming an independent filmmakers club 
and uh, they are um, and we are now even working on the cinema law that is uh, uh, suggested by the government and since we had the uh, open letter towards that uh, document um, with many suggestions so uh, to, uh, we were suggested to collaborate on that uh, document and we are uh, working now um, bringing many suggestions in the document to develop the film industry and uh, again there are many many women involved in uh, in the group who is uh, developing this uh, document so i would say that of course armenia is a country where it's always uh, more difficult for a woman than uh, for a man uh, but at the moment, there are many women in film industry who are uh, making uh, their way to make films, uh, produce films, uh, direct films, uh, write films, uh, and um, even they are combining their uh, forces now mm -hmm. <laughs> to uh, for on the battlefield, <laughs> but not towards the uh, issue mm, female male but towards the issue of having uh, regulations, of having that we lack. In general. In, yes, uh, to, to, have, to have a basis, to have a ground where we all stand, first of all, and then we see if, uh, uh, there, are, if there is an um, issue of uh, um, giving a film to a man or a woman. What I see, there is an issue of giving uh, films on... on uh, on different, uh, um, um, towards different, uh, uh, cho uh, the choices are made um, not towards a woman or a man, but uh -huh. towards we know this director, we don't know this director, mm -hmm. we know this uh, person, uh, we, we don't know this person, <laughs> etc. Et so that's what I would like to say for the start. Yeah. In UK, it's a bit depressing figure comparing to Armenia. Depressing? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, in 1913, uh, the 31 percent of uh, crew, uh, in general in films, were women, and now in 19 uh, in 2017, it even goes down <laughs> this number. So it's now 30 <laughs> percent. So that's why in Armenia it's uh, so very strong. That's true. You, you, that's you, true. <laughs> if we see, as you say. Uh, you, you, like there are um, Maria Sahakyan, yeah. Jana Kardunan, um, mm. and uh, many others that uh, may uh, make uh, now films, not help just make films, films, produce films, and, um, and uh, also among producers, there are many women. So I mean, the number increases. That's that's for sure. But why is so? You think? Because, because it's now more difficult, and women uh, like fight, and the yeah. men, the, the, the <laughs> men are used to fight. Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's that's yeah. very simple. I think that's true. Yeah. But I wouldn't agree in total with you because uh, I think it's a very good strategy to um, go together and work together with the men for a film law. But you should, at the same minute, work and struggle for gender equity not say first film law and then gender equity. Now you have the chance to bring into the film law gender equity and that's very important because it's a big struggle and you need so much um, strength and uh, so if you, if you are successful and you have the, this law, maybe you are tired and you wouldn't like to to fight for gender equity, so you have to do both together. Mm -hmm. And if you are so many women in this process, so I think you have a really good chance to to do it uh, at once. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, uh, I, I think that's the uh, experience in all countries that you don't have to say, okay, we do it later, but do it you now. have do it now, yes. do it right now, do it together with the men, and try to convince for. Uh, especially the younger men, to do it together with you. I mm -hmm. think that's really important. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, dear Thank Silvia, you for as uh, our staff is taking notes, uh, I would ask to introduce yourself before, oh, sorry. before talking. Um, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Silke Rebiger from the, international, uh, from the Dortmund Cologne International Women's Film Festival. Thank you.
Uh, and Armine is. Um, uh, and I'm an actress, writer, and film producer. Armine and actress, writer, and film producer. Thank you. Thank you. No? Any maybe, views? Maybe All right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I'm just going to Is it on the microphone? Yeah, 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 it's on, it's on. No, I said it's long. I hear it. Go on, talk. Yeah. I'm Leslie Ann Coles, and I am an actress, filmmaker, and producer, and I write. And I also run an international woman directors film festival in Canada, Toronto. We are celebrating 16 years. Uh, in uh, June 2018, mm -hmm. and we show films directed by women. Our uh, script development program is open to men and kind of speaks to the whole gender issue. So in 2003, we decided that we would invite men to a, comp a component of the film festival. So the script development program is open to both men and women, but for men, their scripts have to feature a female protagonist. Because in North America, what we're seeing is lack of representation of women on the screen, lack of representation of women in being crew, DOPs, people working behind the camera. As well, um, there are a lot of women directors in Canada, but the struggle that we face is that we're not getting the big budgets. Hmm. So you talked about visibility. Who, who do you know? Who are they going to give the money to? Well, they're going to give the money to somebody they know. But if women don't get a chance to work with bigger budgets and make bigger films, they're never going to be known. So we're struggling with the, uh, with the same issues. What we did, uh, Canada has a public funding, um, so Telefilm Canada, Ontario Me Media Development Corps. And um, so we had a, held a summit uh, five years ago at St. John's Women's Film Festival, and the female I was there, women in the director's chair, women in film and television, um, oh my gosh, um, women in view, so many femme-centric organizations who've been advocating for gender equity. Uh, and we held a summit at a film festival for two days. We met in a closed door session to come up with a proposal that we then presented to the funders, Telefilm and OMDC. We, we decided we're not going to ask them to solve the problem. We're going to come with a solution to the problem. And it was to implement certain changes in how money is allocated and who is looking at the projects when they're being submitted for consideration for funding. And they implemented within a year some of the changes that we've, we've requested. We're still not there. We're still struggling. Um, but one of the things that happened in the television industry was that there were some production companies that came on board and said, we're going to give women a break. We're going to let women shadow senior producers, senior directors on set. So there's this whole process happening with Sinking Ship and a couple of other production companies where women are actually being given up the opportunity to shadow senior producers, senior directors on set. Mm -hmm. As a festival director, we're seeing a lot of films directed by women, more and more and more and more and more every year. And I think that's because of digital filmmaking, democratization of content. Anyone can make a film, really, now. So I think that's wonderful that we're seeing that. But I don't think we're being represented adequately in film festivals outside of female um, director film festivals. I don't think we're being adequately represented. I see that a lot. Um, so that's my piece in terms of... And we have something we could share with you. Um, for eight years now, as part of the Female Eye, we have a round table discussion for about four hours. We have brunch on the last day of the film festival. And we gather producers and directors, and men are invited to that as well, funders. And we have conversations about the producer-director relationship, about obstacles confronting women directors, producers in different countries. And then we're putting together um, a summary report. So all of the tables, the different tables meet, and then at the end of the session they report back. So we've been sharing best practices, uh, tips, 
things that are working in some countries, things that aren't, you know. So, and that's been really great. We're going to be we're putting together the um, summary reports, and we're going to be sharing that with yeah, other. That would be great. We'll definitely share it with you. Yes, and you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I can. Uh, my name is Kelly. I'm from Canada, but I work in the United States. I work in New York, and I live in Los Angeles. So I've been. The difference being that there's not a public funding model for a lot of this thing. It's very commercial based. So. A lot of things that I've heard over the last few days are similar in the commercial base, but there's not an organization that's going to do a study and fix it. It has to fix itself. So things like yesterday, where we heard there are m many, many women producers or film students, but they were given low-budget films. And by the time you get to the high-budget film, which would be Hollywood, there's maybe, what was it, 1% or 10%? Mm. are women, it's men. So there, there are a lot of women at the bottom of the food chain, but they can't raise. Mm. So I work for a film distribution company that was started by a woman filmmaker named Barbara Koppel, who made Harlan County, USA. So she's very respected. Um, and, the, and I work for a theater as well in dance. And both institutions are specifically there to create diversity. But they're both run by men. <laughs> mm. I've always, I've worked in women dominated fields my entire career, but I've always had a man as a boss. And I, I have good men as bosses, I'm like, <laughs> they're not the creepy Hollywood guys you're hearing about right now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it's the same thing. There's that ceiling, and I will always be at a certain level. So the most I can do is speak to these men and always create my opinion and, and do the numbers. I'm like, well, how many women do we have in this? How many people of color do we have in this? How many, you know, what's the age? We, we do the numbers on every program we do. We, you know, three women, two African Americans, two Asians, because America has a very, another issue, gender and racism. So we work very specifically on that. So what I would like, what I've seen really work I, the best example I can give is Ava DuVernay. I don't know if you know her. She won an Oscar a couple of years ago for, um, I can't remember the name of her film. But Ava is Bell. an African-American woman. What was it? it was, Isn't it Belle? No, it's, uh, it's like, the name oh, of a city. A great nation. Oh. Uh, anyway, she had a distribution company while she was a filmmaker, and she distributed uh, African-American and women directors only. So now she's a huge Hollywood star. So what she's done is several things. One is taken all of her money and put it into producing women. And every time she gets an opportunity, like working with Oprah or someone huge, she hires only women directors on her TV series. And she does a screening series where she presents films by women or African Americans. So my, I think that that is the thing. Someone, when, when again, there's no public funding there. So someone who has rose, risen above this whole system has to bring everybody up with her. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, there, are a lot, there aren't a lot of people who will do that. But if you find that one person, yeah, that's... And I think the other thing I was thinking is the idea of women's film festivals is great, but it is, it is better if it's part of the same film festival, where it's all one canon, mm -hmm. right? But that's challenging. But that's I think challenging. But I mean, if you got like, if you're talking about Toronto Film Festival getting the, you know, they're never going to do it. I know, but that's what has to happen. It but, has to become I, the same. I agree, but I think if we can co-present, like yeah. we're co doing, this is our second co-presentation with you, mm -hmm. and I think um, it's very important. And I'm a big advocate for sister film festivals. That we we need organizations we need to hold hands and we need to share be one mind especially now and we need to um, we need to support each other and we need to be each other's champion women we don't we're we're tired of fighting for the same scraps we don't need to do that anymore we need to rise up and we need to support each other each other's success all the time I would say that's what we need to do and co-present, do our co-presentations with other, with other film festivals. So thank you for inviting the female eye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming. Of course, of course, Russia protected. Yeah. Um, well, so many things was already told. Yeah. I just want to say a few words about my experience as a film director. My name is Tatiana Danielians, I'm film director and producer. And I have, I was raised in Moscow, but I had quite international experience studying and post in Brussels and studying by Andrew White in Poland. 
and living in Italy and doing films there. But still, I would uh, refer to my Russian experience. Uh, you know, Russia has very long experience with feminism and with, uh, how do you call this, suffragistki. Mm -hmm. So we used to be very liberated since October Revolution. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I just realized that in Moscow, which is a huge megapolis, we don't even have a women film festival. Mm. which in a way means a lot. Mm -hmm. So since I studied uh, in 90s and late 90s film directing, I've never been discriminated as a woman, officially or not officially, but I completely agree with Leslie Point, we've never been given a proper budget. Mm. And you know, I, once I gave interview here in Golden Abricot, I was asked the same question, so what do you think about the uh, women issue? I said, you know, men collaborated much better <laughs> men found each other much better, men agreed between themselves much better, and it creates sort of a male club, mm, yeah. which you can't really enter to. You know, all my friends, colleagues, men, I love them, they're fantastic, mm -hmm. but in a certain point you feel yourself excluded very smoothly, especially if it concerns money, but mm. money is everything in our business mm -hmm. because we will find creative talents we'll find everybody but to find money is a, an issue how to work on this subject how to succeed and just uh, uh, Armenia just uh, and, uh, Armenia just uh, uh, presented initiative which seems to be very efficient to us as well how could we enter to this male club and to raise better budgets for our film you know, uh, because it's really on the carpet. Nobody discussed this. You know, we don't need to claim our rights opposite of government because we have equal rights with men. But as soon as you want to find bigger budget, yeah. you stop. It's a big problem. So um, this is actually my uh, sincere experience uh, being on this field, and I really don't know a solution. How could we work not with twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars for documentary, but to have a proper budget like one hundred thousand or two hundred thousand? Two point five million. How yeah. <laughs> so this is my, my, my drops. Mm -hmm. to this. Yeah, it's think, good. It's a good point. I think one uh, one of the main points is uh, that you need uh, a proper network, uh, and I think it works when it's over there. Um, and um, in, in Germany in 2014, they built up, they, the women directors built up an association uh, pro quota uh, directing. And nowadays there are uh, in this uh, association 390 women directors. And uh, they forced uh, the other association, the men association of directors and uh, others, um, to do researches and uh, to have numbers. You need to have numbers, exactly numbers of how many women are working in the field of DOP, of directing, screenwriting, producing, mm -hmm. and so on. And then you need uh, numbers of um, the money yeah. they, they get. So um, I know from the women uh, uh, directors of photography, they earn much less money than the men. And uh, the law in Germany is completely against this. Same work, same money, says, says the law. And Germans are very um, strict to the law. They're... Um, um, law addictive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Very, very much <laughs> law normally. Right. But this is also the hidden agen agenda, uh, also in the industry. It, everybody knows. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. The, the women has to, to build up networks and to fight against this. And uh, women um, uh, pro quota directing, uh, they um, had a lot of success in the last uh, two, three years because we have the researchers. Um, television stations uh, are uh, thinking about 50-50 uh, uh, women and men directing, especially in the very um, interesting uh, field of um, um, TV feature films mm -hmm. and um, you need to have 50-50 in all those um, commissions and selection committees for the festival, for funding, for everything. That's, uh, I think it's very, very important and uh, otherwise you wouldn't succeed to have the, the, same, the same money. 
And you have to invite, I always can say it, you have to invite Anna Zerner from the Swedish Film Institute. She is really strong and she knows how to do it. And the Swedish people, they are having so much success in changing uh, the, um, the issues uh, and changing, yes. doing really well success in the field of gender. What is your name, excuse me? Anna Zerner. Anna Zanna. And she influenced yes. the movement forward in Canada, very much so. The Swedish model really informed our approach to our public funders in Canada. I, I, I want to add to, the, you, you spoke about um, the boy, Old Boys Club, and I think one of the things that's happening as well in Canada, and I'm really proud to see it, is that women are crewing women. Mm -hmm. Women are bringing women onto the production. So I, I'm proud that my film, actually, that I just finished, had uh, nine women working on it. it. It took a long time to finish this film, but I had women DOPs. Mm -hmm. I had I edited my film with the woman. I had uh, women uh, photographer, two actually, two cinematographers who are women. And I think, I think that we need to crew up. I think we need to create our own club, and we need to find those women like Ava DuVernay is doing, and bring those women onto our productions, and work with women. And, and we need to, to collaborate. But you also have to go in those old men's clubs too. Yes, yes. I agree. You can yeah. enter. You have, yes, yeah. you have to go there and you have to fight there too. You need a, your own network. You are absolutely right. But you have also to go in the other association yes. and to fight there and say to them, no, you are not right. I'm here on the right spot and I'm doing the same work as you do. Right. Do you know that but when women you said will protect each other about salaries, Salary. whether it's film or any institution, I know that or any business, women always ask for twenty five to thirty percent less than a yeah. man will ask for. Hmm. And the person exactly. who's paying yeah. is going to pay you what you ask for. So there's this somewhere I don't know where this I just read this there's one program that's being developed is teaching women how much they're worth and what to ask exactly. for. Yeah. And you have to yeah, because we're always afraid we're not going to get the job, right? So you, you're like, well, I'll take less than I'm worth. I do it all the time. I make $50,000 less than a man doing what I do because I'm afraid to ask for that more. Yeah, and we're still under the pressure. And all the actresses, again, back to Hollywood, there's you know, famous, famous men. women don't yeah. feel the but strength ourselves. to ask. Yeah, we're not liberated from our yeah. you know, prejudice. This is a problem, but this is I mean, like, if, even if you're, like, a very famous Hollywood actress, you're getting, you won't ask for it, you know? And because you don't realize, you don't even realize that that would happen yeah. or that a man would get that much more. Even in the tech industry, the women ask for 25 to 30% less. Women in tech. Technology. IT. Technology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in Germany now, it, um, there is a, a new law that uh, allows um, people to ask about the salary uh, uh, of their colleagues in the special branches. And that's a very mm -hmm. good thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it was an unwritten law that you don't have to speak about salary in Germany. It was for a long, long time. And that changed. Mm -hmm. And um, especially the, the high manager, they have has to open their budget. Mm -hmm. And you can read it in the, in the internet, what they are earning. I think they earn much more than <laughs> it's written there. But it's, it's the first step so that it, no, it's so open to, to, to the people uh, and, and they, they know that there are some people who earn unbelievable, much, unbelievable, much more that they yeah. they need, and you can. And it's, it's also going down to the industry, and um, you can ask about the salary of your mm. colleague, not a special one, not a person, but uh, of the same profession and the same. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, great. So you can. It's, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, it's, now, I mean, it's a new it's law. the way around. <laughs> because before we could always ask, but now in the recent years uh, things change, and uh, now it's the way around that now we people cannot ask. And uh, cannot but ask. I like that. Yes, before we could always ask, but when uh, now, now more international organizations, more international uh, <clears throat> jobs uh, were created, uh, it spread all over that. 
now people cannot ask for uh, the salary and the contract. Sometimes, yeah, salary <laughs> is uh, even announced during the job uh, job announcement, but sometimes it's even mentioned in your contract that you cannot uh, talk about yes, that. Right. Yes, right. Yes, yeah. true. <laughs> there are it's different, true. different approaches. Yeah, true. So it's interesting. But I like that law is accepted in Germany, but uh, because it's the salary also must be visible as everything else, I think. Mm. Same job, same pay. Yes. Yeah. Same qualifications, yeah. same pay. It's just a, to me, it's a basic human right. Yeah. Right. Yes. yeah. Any additions? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm taking notes as well. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Lots of similarities, as I can see. And um, I was asking Mariam if there is the same situation about uh, allocating more budgets to men or to women. And <laughs> she replied that uh, there is no money at all, both to men and <laughs> to women. <laughs> so that's why it's an equal situation, <laughs> yeah, more or less, without money, when there is no difference. But, uh, I, can, I can add that, for example, uh, we have uh, state studios. Uh, maybe now it's changed. State funded, huh? You mean? Yes, yeah, state uh, funded. And uh, their salaries are so small that uh, when you want to invite somebody which is a good professional person, uh, you can say, no, I'm not agree. <laughs> because we have uh, market prices and uh, state prices. And uh, there's a big difference mm -hmm. between market prices uh, and state uh, prices. But so it's a different system because those studios, as you mentioned, they should not exist in the first place because uh, they are uh, production companies as all the others but uh, somehow they receive funding we out of competition and uh, then uh, they just uh, receive funding and they need to allocate the funding but they just use them for their own uh, production company so this is one of those things that we fight for that uh, must not exist that any company any organization that receives state funding for some uh, purpose must not uh, produce uh, itself, uh, but must either uh, right. participate in competition with the others uh, to produce or must uh, receive and allocate for uh, some uh, purpose. So that's what's wrong in Armenia, and now that's what we one of those things that we fight against actually. And uh, I would like to add that uh, for this moment we have no any fund which support film uh, making. So you, any fund we have no any fund which supports to film. No, no, we have. How come we don't have? We have funding that is uh, allocated to National Cinema Center, and National Cinema Center uh, um, allocates it for film production. We have it. And that's the thing, how but, it uh, works, but yes, we have it. Uh, but uh, the question is uh, it, how it's work, uh, how is uh, um, possibility to achieve this money, and how yeah, it's not because thing. there is no any information. So, for example, uh, the deadline is January 1st. So you can apply for $5,000. Uh, so there is no such information. This all is very close. Uh, you can uh, give them application, and you don't know for how many money. So it's all in uh, clouds. Mm. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, the cinema center is what I talked uh, before. That cinema center is both uh, producing and receiving state funding. So that's what we are now on a battlefield <laughs> with uh, for the in the law to be changed and. Uh, Hopefully it changes because at the moment uh, the Ministry of Culture really uh, um, uh, wants to ex uh, works on the law and uh, hopefully our demands and suggestions uh, are uh, met. Included, yeah. So, so in in Canada there's the Arts Councils, Canada Arts Council for the arts. Films, so there's the arts councils, and then there's the telefilm and the OMDC. But they have to be very transparent in their guidelines. So the guidelines will say yes. these are the submission deadlines. This is the this is when you will receive notification. You have the jury members. You know who the jury is, and and when the decisions are made, they're very transparent in who got what amount of money, who got what money, and how much they got. And against yeah. which criteria? Pardon me. And against which criteria it was selected? Yes, and against yes. which criteria? And the yes. criteria is very transparent. So yes. issues of gender, uh, parity, issues of uh, just 
representation of diversity, all of those things, they have to yeah. fulfill criteria, the funders, or they won't get the money yes. to, to allocate yes. the funding. Yes. They'll yes. create a different system. Yes. So th that's somewhere where you need to take them to they, task as yes. well. Yes. You know, because if they're just taking the money and then producing their own projects, and you don't even know how much or what they're doing or where, you know, that's, that's it's a futile system. We even don't know. At the moment, they already have decided the firms for the next year. We, do we even don't know who is in the commission, who, 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 was the, who were the people who decided. Maybe they were themselves. We mm. even don't know. So that's what they said. Uh, these, are, uh, one, uh, these are among those issues that we are now uh, <laughs> trying to... Uh, put in the law so that the law does not allow and uh, there are regulations and it's transparent and all. and there are even we are even trying to persuade them to have different funding for each um, category for because it's uh, for t even t today they even don't have the uh, they then separate the year funding for each category they just give as they like uh, is it feature? Is it short? Is it uh, uh, animation? Is it uh, anyway? Like in Germany, you have you have this um, separate funding for uh, children's uh, films, for example. And Sweden, uh, one of the, those countries who really developed uh, each category well, they have uh, separate funding for children's films for years. That's why they have now brand of children's films because they have separate funding. So it, we don't even have separate funding for minority and majority. So, and now we try to, um, uh, to try to persuade the government that it's important that everything has its own uh, budget, even um, the production stages, categories, etc. But I would like to ask a question. Also, um, the, yeah, I know that, for example, in Germany, uh, all the categories, uh, everything, they have separate funding, but women, um, also have a separate, is no, there a separate, no. there is no, in neither in Canada or no, German, Germany, there is no separate funding for female that would be director, sexist. producer. <laughs> yeah. no. That would be considered sexism. So uh, they wouldn't yes. be allowed to do that. But what they have been brought to task to do is to disclose, they're saying, oh, well, women aren't submitting for the funding. At one point they were saying, oh, well, you know, the reason women aren't getting the funding is because they're not applying. And we said, well, come on, show it. Look, we know women are applying. We know that they are. So we were asked calling them to task. Even in the recommendations we made, we want to know who is applying. Yes. Right? Yes. Who's applying? If you're saying no women are applying, and we, yes. we don't believe that. How much? Yeah. Yes. And how much are they asking for? Much. Yes. Right? And that's, but I think it's, um, it's important to have a state organization, a cinema center, but it has to be um, open. You have to know what what they are doing. But you have to. Uh, you need a, one specific institution to um, give the funding, or two, or two. Yes. Yes. Or four. In, Ger in yeah. Germany, yes. a small country like Armenia, one is enough working <laughs> properly. <laughs> there could be two. There could of be course, two okay. because yeah. it would be even better if there are two. Uh, but. Yeah. Um, at the moment we have uh, at the moment we have one and it's uh, functioning really bad really 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 bad so <laughs> and we are fighting already <laughs> for 10 years with this organization wow. and only this year um, we finally at least now there is hope to have to uh, to bring a law with certain yeah, issues yeah, and uh, to make this organization function uh, otherwise. But I know that it will be a long battle. Do, yeah. do you that. have co-production treaties with other countries like no, Canada? But we have, no, but we have the convention signed and uh, the Con European Convention of Co-production. Okay. So it uh, means that uh, we can do uh, co-production with different countries, if, if even with Canada, if there is a third country which is uh, on convention. So it has to be a try, a, a, a try territory, a three territory production. Yes it, yes, it can be a three territory production with, let's say, for example, France, Germany, or any country yeah. that is uh, on, that has signed the convention. Because Canada does a lot of co-productions. Like, we're, they're, they're, I sat on the OMDC jury, and by the way, so in Canada, the OMDC give development money. So the OMDC will come in, and they, it's not a perfect system, because you can get $25,000 development money to, to, to research 
your story, to, to write the script, to create uh, your, find out who your cast is, like to, to develop a, a production yeah. basically package, right? That's what we don't have. And then, and then you get money, you can get production money from some a portion from OMDC, but you have to have money from a distributor or from mm. Telefilm Canada. So it's there's different systems and some work really well. I mean, the problem with that is that you can get development money, you can get development money and then not get production money. Just because you get development money doesn't uh, mean you're, it doesn't make any sense. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> so, um, oh, it's called the, um, the OMC? Uh, it's called, it, I'm from Ontario, so my territory is Ontario. Uh, so it's the Ontario Media Development Corporation, but their model, and Telefilm Canada is very, very good, because Telefilm Canada covers all of Canada, but there are different territories, Nineveh, Ontario, Western Canada, mm -hmm. and then there are different people who are... Um, and the other thing is, all of those people who sit at the top of level of those organizations, mm -hmm. if you call them as an independent you ha and you want to have a meeting with them, you get a meeting with them. They, they're being paid as public service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, like, they're like public service people, whatever mm -hmm. they're called. Mm -hmm. And they're, they are obligated to take meetings with you. They're obligated to because they are getting paid by the government to sit in this position and their job is to serve the film screenwriting community. I have a question. Right. What do you think about anonymous applications that don't say whether it's a man or a woman? Or do you think we're still at a point where it, it should say it's a woman director and therefore it's time for payback and getting more attention? Or do you think, you know how some orchestras now, they don't, let you, mm -hmm. they don't mm. see the musician mm -hmm. yeah. so that they don't only hire men, which was happening forever. So they put them behind a screen. I always wonder if we could just send projects in with no, would we? no people. I could change no, my name. On the other hand, uh, the <laughs> you don't put your name. But on the other you hand, have a production with, company with, uh, with film production, uh, it w I think it will not work because they always, the part, the previous films are always part of projects. Yeah, it's so true. I think yeah. right yeah. now it's a good time to be that's, that's, that's you know, the, because for example, is, it can be for example for scripts, uh, yeah. screenplay competitions can could be like mm -hmm. anonymous for yeah. example but mm -hmm. uh, film project competitions how yeah and it because that comes down to marketing too right as you said which films are important to an organization which directors are considered important and sellable yeah. and that's what you're going to produce because that's what you're going to sell so. well we could never have that with the female eye we ask for gender, we're very clear. Well, we yeah. need to know. Yeah, yeah but you wouldn't believe how many men I try mean, to like sneak their films into the festival. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's like you guys have your own festival, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. and then they get mad when I'm like, "Okay, you're a, you're a dude, and we are not." Well, now that now that everyone's non-gender and trans, I mean, well, no, anyone who identifies that. as a woman, that's fine. If they identify as a woman, it's fine. You know. Guys, we're sitting surrounded with young, young, yeah, only future here. producers or scriptwriters or filmmakers. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering what they are thinking about. Me too. Yeah. 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 We everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you agree with everyone? You are not afraid of your future battle. <laughs> are you I, from I'd be curious uh, to know who they university? Are. are you from UN Theatre University? Yeah. Your future filmmakers or producers? Producers. Producers, okay. Is there a producing department yeah. now? Yeah, one uh, Art talk, man huh? Art management, yes. Ha, it's called Kukutachi 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 Kukut
Uh, but I think that uh, there is a mission, there is a one uh, very important problem, and uh, it is that uh, we, uh, as we females and the males, we are very different, as psychologically as with our nature. And we look under uh, realizing um, the disadvantages and advantages of uh, female, uh, we should accept that we are different. That difference uh, has its influence also uh, on uh, it's uh, psychological and uh, creative sense. Creative sense, yes. And uh, how much uh, we can try uh, to be equal, uh, we couldn't. Hamilashutsu. <laughs> <laughs> Translation. 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 I can translate uh, the general, uh, yes. the general flow, uh, that how much we uh, try to uh, affirm uh, equality in the gender, we cannot because um, uh, we, uh, at first, first of all, we should uh, affirm solidarity about female and the, uh, female and the male uh, psychology. And um, uh, so we cannot. We cannot. Um, <laughs> just wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think, no, no, second, there is, first of all, uh, I would say a few words about the translation. And uh, just, just to bring that, um, um, in general, he wants to say that the word equality itself yes. brings to some confrontation between uh, men and uh, women. And since uh, the differences um, exist uh, I I naturally, uh, so this confrontation will not be in favor of raising the issues. However, I think, uh, I mean, uh, he, he also wants to say that maybe there is, must be another word representing the issue, like, for example, um, peace, like so, not solidarity, but uh, peace, maybe. But I mean, I, uh, there is. Uh, I would. I would like to. Yeah. yeah sure. But yeah, for yes. sure. That is. That yeah. is, this is an goal. issue of peace. No, but but uh, I think that there is misunderstanding uh, by him because we speak about opportunities. We do not speak about um, differences of. Uh, uh, I, I will say it in two languages. I think that uh, we speak about equal opportunities. Equality is equal opportunities, yeah, not we are similar or we are not similar. Right. So, yes, like you said, we but in the world, we have a lot of people who are not going in the world. We have a lot of people who in the world. We have a lot of people who are not going to be it's, uh, may I ask yes, uh, something? Yeah, please do. <laughs> 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 Yes, <laughs> 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 It's the next generation that's going to fix this. <laughs>
Oh, oh serious? Oh. I think right. it, it, it's, 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 um, it's, um, you translate, you translate it's, now. <laughs> at first place, it's um, very interesting to have um, different types of people. So gay people, lesbian people, transgender people, women, men. So that's uh, that the whole life. And that's interesting and that has to interest us. So that's the first point. The second point is working in the film industry. It's a work and it's about um, to earn the money for everyday life. It's it's really it's work. Like I work in the industry. I, like I work in the school or everywhere. It's a it's, job. And so it's women a has a it's a job. Women has the same right and need the same money as men. And the third point is that may a little bit disappointing to men. It's not equal today with the money. And they have to give money to the women, so they will lose money. And that's uh, disappointing the men, but that's a fact. Okay. Am I need to ask her? Yeah. 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 And I would add, I add uh, to Zilke's uh, that I, I really totally agree with, but I would add that it's not only money, but it's also power. Because yes, money is also power, so power, power decision, power, 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 <laughs> power, power of influence, yeah. power. The, yeah, word, yeah. the even more than money. Yeah. Can, can I say something? <laughs> I want to add something. I think I think this is this is the, this is my feeling, um, but I think I'm, it's shared among many in the industry. Women are the majority. There are more women than there are men, and women want to see themselves reflected. In cinema, that we want to see our, our real selves as we really are, as we really are, and um, on the on, when we go to a movie, and we want to be represented in the stories that are told that depict women in cinema, in theater, in all aspects of the art, and it's not to say. I don't think it's. I don't know. For me, it's not about equality. We're equal. We're different. We're different, yeah. but we're equal. And it's about equal opportunity, but it's also about, you know, for years I got in a lot of trouble because people would say, well, why do you have a women's film festival? Do you need to have a women's film festival? Are women not equal to men? And I would say, or they would say, what's the difference between a man and a woman in the way they write a story or how they tell a film? Well. I get in trouble because I say there is a difference. There actually is a difference. And the difference that I have seen from 17 years of looking at films from international community is I see from films written and directed by women, I see more women in lead roles, protagonists. I see women over the age of 20 in romantic situations. I see women in their 40s and 50s and 60s. I see women who aren't one-dimensional characters, like uh, happy or uh, bitch or, uh, you know, the uh, uh, or the girlfriend or the bad mother or the, the good wife. mother or, you know, the full real women, real whole women that are good and bad and nice and not nice and angry and sweet. And so women, I see more realistic portrayals of women in films written and directed by women. And we need to see that. Women want to see that. They go to films. They go and see cinema. They go to plays. And I think men and women treat story differently. I do. I think they do. I think women don't treat sex and violence the same way. I think women often, it's what you don't see in film when it comes to sex and violence. It's what you don't see. And, um, and nothing is gratuitous, meaning there's nothing there that's just there because... We want to see a big thing blow up and a bunch of bodies lie around there, whatever. Do That's you, do the younger women think that men and women think differently? Because I wonder, I have a daughter your age, and, and she says that that's just because we've learned that men think women I'm think I'm just saying as artists, no, I see I a difference so between films. But I wonder if, if 
Oh. I mean, women can be just as violent as men, or sure. just as. I wonder. Um, I think. Can I go next? Excuse me. Uh, I'm uh, Ali. I am a militarist. I like to call that way myself because um, critics are. Um, um, you know, critics are negative for people, so I like to call myself a theorist. Could you do some negative people? Uh, well, the word critic. You could be yeah, a the journal. Word, right? There's journalist and critic too. Right? So, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, <laughs> men observe the world more generalized, but uh, women do detailed. Mm. So yeah, there's a difference. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Any other so views? Emotional. Other views? Lisa? Uh, no? <laughs> no. I mean, I they should be more brave. Well, I know that kids, the <laughs> kids, the kids I know that age think we're crazy that we even talk about this so much. Because they just assume you know, that they all there's lots are of women producers. Always, I don't even understand. Yeah. Yeah. I don't to say that. No? But lots of women producers. Like, oh, yeah, Why do you true. think there's so many women producers? Because of compromise? Mike Nitro? Because you're promoting okay. someone else. I'm, not, I'm just curious, there's no right or wrong answer. Why are there so many women producers across the country in film and television? Yeah. Film and television, so many women That's producers. True. Why, why are there so many women? Good leadership skills. Good leadership skills, what, what, why else? Maybe not being in front they want of to the bring picture. Uh, stories. They want to bring stories to realization. Right. I, think. I, I, I speak on my uh, uh, experience. And I think that women are really good multitaskers. Women yes, can, so. women, we, we, it's in our DNA from having to raise babies and, and do all these things, right? Or not raise babies, but, you know. So I think women are good multitaskers. Women women can go from here to there to there to there, think then, this, right, but that. But then why do you want to be a producer, not a director? Well, it's a choice. Some people are really good at, at, at moving around and some think really laterally, but I think one of the reasons there's so many good women producers is women are good at multitasking. And they're good nurturers and they can kind of balance things between all. It's very complicated in the movie world on Isn't a set. Isn't that what a director does? A director does that too, but a producer kind of makes sure that that's all I think it's. Happening. I think it's... Maybe again, it's that not. It's I don't know what the ego is. Why are there so many producers in film and because television? Because I think that women don't think we sh should be ahead of it. Be the director, be the star, be the well, well, be the producer, and help well, someone else's story. More there's, it's nurturing. there's a difference between a film and television. In film, the director has the power, just like in theater, the director is the, is the decision maker. In television. Producers have more control. That's the way it is. In, in, in North American film and television, there's a difference. Directors, film, they're the ones who, their creative vision, they run the show. And in theater, in television, it's the producer. It's a, produ a pro producer, executive producer, line producer driven medium. And there's a difference. What's this show running? The showrunner is like if I if you have a script you've created a series you're kind of running the show in terms of the, the maintaining the trajectory of the story. So. Uh, I wonder if uh, from fundraising perspectives or uh, negotiation skills, women are more yes. persuasive uh, or successful than men. That's probably another aspect of Maybe. choosing uh, producing rather than direction. Possibly. Between languages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah we talked about public funding. What about private funding uh, in Armenia and abroad uh, when you go to businesses or. Uh, no, it's impossible. <laughs> in other countries. <laughs> no, because, because it's also connected. <laughs> to be honest, it's, connect, it's connected with two things. So, first one is again connected with the law. Why? Because if there is a tax shelter, yeah, for course, example, yeah. as in Belgium. Then uh, it's easier because any uh, uh, company <laughs> that uh, has uh, wants to participate in a film instead of paying tax. So, but since in Armenia there is no tax shelter, then it comes only to one point. 
uh, personal uh, relationship. relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not impossible, as you say, but it's impossible just as a system uh, because it just exists for personal relationship, mm -hmm. which is uh, very, very bad. And again, it's. Uh, um, I know only the films that are meant in Armenia, films get credit funding. But it's not about artistic films, it's not about, uh, it's just the films that are done uh, for pop, like popular, uh, for commercial, in, 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 in Armenia commercial release by very popular people who have uh, a personal relationship with those uh, companies. And they are, most of them are men, I think. Mm -hmm. I would say that maybe only, maybe only. Production companies. Do you have production companies? Yes, post production, production. So there is no tax companies. incentives? No no tax? At the moment, there is no. Reduction. Wow. But yes, there is no any tax uh, incentives. The, uh, incentives for a film uh, industry. But maybe, hopefully, a little um, something can be included in this uh, For law, sure. but and it's not connected with the tax, but maybe some uh, uh, refund uh, will, will well, be possible. That's a great incentive. Yes, For but uh, but we are not Protestant. sure yet. No, there yeah. is um, hope for small um, thing, but otherwise we don't have anything. any any tax. Tatiana, um. uh, what about Russia? The legislation on films. Uh, is it similar to Armenia? Well, you know, for each film, you, uh, because I am an independent producer, I really didn't produce films of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, each film has its own story. Mm -hmm. My last film, which will screen today, is a completely private investment. Mm -hmm. So after talking with Minister of Culture, because it's about Armenian musicians, mm -hmm. and logically that the uh, sponsor should be Armenian. Ministry of Culture, and it's about Yerevan, but I didn't get any sense from this official institution here. And finally, I got private money mm -hmm. from investor. From Armenia? No, from Moscow. From but Moscow. this guy is like me, half Armenian. Yeah, and he course. had the same attitude to subject I wanted to show. Sure. But the uh, previous film has been sponsored by television, mm -hmm. Fifth Channel, uh, mm -hmm. Channel Culture. Before, it was uh, again combination of uh, governmental money and private money. Mm -hmm. So each film has its own story. But and I did even no budget film, which I'm very proud about. It was all sponsored by fundraising, by uh, Planeta Ru, by independent individuals who gave their copics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, great. How so yeah. every time I try to find the most uh, efficient solution, because I, I like to work quickly. Yeah. It's made me crazy to wait for uh, for years, you know, to find copics. I call this copics, not rubles, because, you know, <laughs> we work with such a budget, you know. And then I screen my film in Venice, <laughs> Italian film, and uh, agent asked me, what is the budget? I said, well, just guess. <laughs> she said, something up to 200,000 euros. I said, yes, yes sure. <laughs> but the budget was like, well, like, like, like even, even, you know, it was like, never tell them the budget. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't because you know it's. Uh, maybe yeah. you should. Maybe you should say it was two million, right? Um, and people yeah. will start saying, "Oh, that's how much we need to it's, pay her." It, it, you know, just to yeah. finish, yeah. Yeah, it's very painful subject. For instance, I create a story, I create a script about trees, about trees, trees and people, and I applied three times to very noticeable, very important producer uh, to the state's organization, to our Ministry of Culture in Russia, and we never got money. Never got money. It means, because it's a big project with a lot of money, that I have to stop work, my work on this uh, project. And it's been frozen for three years already. So it's, it's not easy, but uh, what, I, what I teach you young people, you have to be strong, you have to find your own way. While you wait for, while you try to change the situation, like Silke suggested, making calculation, making this clear, uh, you do you do what you do. You try to find money from any source you can. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Did, did I answer? In yeah. a, <laughs> I tried to answer. I just also sincere. maybe for uh, young people again, I would say that in Armenia, uh, for years, for decades, it was not a, was not possible to receive uh, funding for first feature for decades, because oh, yeah. the, the budget is so small that like three directors uh, receive film, and of course it's always uh, fans directors. So, but in the last 10 years, like uh, a few, 
films uh, got it, and every film, all the films got it because they first got something important outside. Mm. For example, our film, yeah. Joan and the Voices, the feature film, who received a project award in Busan. It was so unexpected for uh, for uh, anybody to uh, re to get to Busan and to receive an award there for the film project that we received funding for it. Of course, very small, uh, like fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> but uh, still, it was it made possible made it possible. And Maria Sahakian also she received uh, um, I think in Sundance uh, mm -hmm, in something. And uh, Chen Chik, there was third film that they received also. Um, Fifty thousand uh, somewhere uh, for in a in a workshop uh, mm -hmm. joint workshop Swiss with Italy. Georgia, yes, Swiss. Uh, so and only then these films were financed uh, by our uh, and till today, till today, no film receives uh, financing until it receives something outside. And so you make them by by miracle, not yeah. by. <laughs> it's just yeah. very very difficult. However, we do not give up. We find opportunities, both opportunities. Fight for the right law and right opportunities, and fight for, as you say, separately for your own uh, story to carry. You know, it's interesting. It's the same in Canada. I'm not kidding. You can, you once the, you go and you win awards outside of your own country, all of a sudden your country's like, she's Canadian or he's Canadian, yes, yes, and they're like, yes, where were you when I needed you anyway? Yes, I don't know. Uh, so you know, but the, you you get accolades outside, and the other thing is, you know, don't underestimate the power of a great short film, yes. because a great short film, whether it's two minutes or five minutes or ten minutes, can be your calling card for a feature film. And there are lots of film festivals around the world that are dedicated to shorts, not mm -hmm. short, like short filmmakers, but short films. <laughs> and, um, and so short films can be great, would you agree? Yes, Powerful yes, calling true. cards for features, yes. yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's the same everywhere. You go, go outside to go and get as, recognized. As far as short films were concerned, <laughs> it just reminds me that in 25 minutes we'll have a short films from BAFTA selection. Uh, being screened within the festival program uh, and uh, trying to conclude our discussion uh, I would like to thank everyone for participation and this active sharing of your <laughs> experience, thoughts, <laughs> views and opinions. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we came up with lists of uh, remarks, notes, we'll conclude and we'll share with all participants afterwards and um, thank you again for your time and uh, you are free to have your coffee and sweets and yeah. continue networking the most important part of the meeting so thank you thank, thank you very much thank you thank you waking up right what we're all firing firing oh, that's what's good about this so you remember